What's going on everybody? It's Mr. Cruz. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use flat.io, F-L-A-T dot I-O. Go to flat.io and make an account. I prefer if you used your MyMail or LEUSD MyMail or Gmail accounts. Um, what's great about that is um, it's compatible with Google Classroom if we ever do decide to merge to a Google Classroom. Um, and it is also going to be compatible with Schoology um, if I ever choose to use that option in Schoology. But anyways, go to flat.io and sign up. As soon as you sign up, it's free. And there's nothing to pay. You can pay for a subscription if you like, and it's actually fairly cheap, but it's free. So sign up, log in. And your home page should look somewhat like this. If you don't see anything like this, find My Library or find New Score or Tab. Okay. So um, before we get started, you should already have your advanced band, treble clef or bass clef, uh, flat.io music. Because this is what we're going to use to teach you how to use flat. Um, and by putting in a variety of rhythms and articulations and symbols by copying this you're going to get used to using flat uh, uh, you're going to get used to using flat.io um, on your computer um, this video is going to be quite lengthy um, so if you get the hang of certain concepts like let's say you get the hang of putting pitches and rhythms in um, you can go to the description below and then fast forward to the parts where I talk about repeats, dynamics, articulation, and all these other things. There are a few things missing in this list, but this will be in the description below so you can fast forward to those spots. So once you're in flat.io, I'm assuming you've already set, um, set up your account or registered. Um, I just go to my library and I click on new score or tab. And then for this assignment, because what you're going to do is you're going to recreate this um, music over here. You're going to recreate this um, because this is an assignment. For this assignment, just call it your name. Okay, so I'm going to put my name and hit continue. All right. After you hit continue, you're going to be asked which instruments do you want to put in your score? Okay, so um, because this is for treble clef instruments, yes, there's a separate video for bass clef. Because this is for treble clef instruments, I'm going to be selecting, selecting some treble clef instruments. Um, I'm going to do this on clarinet, so I'm going to click on woodwind here. And here are all the woodwind instruments. Okay, I'm going to do this on clarinet, so hit the plus sign to add clarinet to your score. You can add more instruments if you like. So let's say you're a brass player. Go to brass up here. Horn in F is French horn, so French horn players, click on that. Here's trumpet over here. If you read treble clef baritone or euphonium, click this one over here. All right. Um, so I don't want to do brass instruments, so I'm going to click minus, and there it goes. goes away. So we are going to write something for clarinet. If you play flute, go back to woodwinds. There was flute up here. If you play saxophone, alto, tenor, barry, soprano, we're all here. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to do this on clarinet just for sampling. Click create. And here is flat.io. Okay. Um, a couple of things that I've noticed is if I make my flat.io window too narrow, the document tools that were right here go away and they go under the document tools like this so like copying and pasting printing and saving okay zooming in zooming out all that stuff goes away but if i widen it just a little bit like this my document tools are up here at the top okay so just letting you know that's where the document tools went okay you have several toolboxes. You have your note toolboxes. This is for putting in pitches and putting in rhythms. Okay. Triplets, sharps, flats, naturals, your accidentals. Next one's articulation, like staccatos, tenudos, accents, marcato, fermata, slurs, 
mask falls breath marks ornaments okay um we are not going to really talk about ornaments today but if this is what you want to if you want to put in um ornaments they're right here dynamics we're going to talk about that crescendo diminuendo tools your dynamic symbols measure tools okay for example if you want to insert a measure before or after you want to only have um, a specific number of measures in one line this is the system break tool change clefs key signatures time signatures adjust the tempo swing um, you need to be a paid subscriber to allow notes to swing okay but that's not important rehearsal numbers bar lines repeat signs repeat measure repeats um del Senio, alcotas fine ds signs dc signs first ending second ending uh these three dots right here running out of screen room but this is for adding a cello rondo retardandos text is for adding lyrics if you have if you're going to write some um songs with lyrics adding chords chord symbols and if you want to add uh, specific notes in there like annotations all right so we're going to teach you how to use flat.io um, by recreating this okay and like i said at any time if you feel like you understand the concept you're getting the hang of um, doing this you can fast forward um, using the description below all right so first things first we're at the beginning of our song and we're, we need to change the key signature and the time signature all right so let's change the key signature first our key signature for our sample song that we're going to create is three flats there are two ways to do that you can hover your curse mouse cursor over the key signature here and then click the number of sharps or flats you want so this is three flats i'm going to click this and there you go okay um you can also change the key signature by going to measure and then clicking on key signature and there are your key signature options right here all 15 of them there you go that changes to the flats what if you had a key signature with no sharps and flats and they're like i don't know where to go what you can do is you can click and there's like kind of a sweet spot here in between the treble clef and the time signature you can click around here and there you go there's the key signature options and we just changed it from no sharps no sharps and flats to three flats time signature we don't need to change the time signature because it's already in four four time okay but to change the time signature that's really easy you can hover your mouse cursor over the time signature here and there are your options okay three four let's say we wanted to change that to common time which is the same as four four come on there we go change it to three four okay you can also change the time signature by going up to the measure tools and then hover over time signature here and click it okay and we could change it that way okay let me go back and change it to four four time all right so that's key signatures and time signatures the next thing we need to do is talk about how to add pitches and rhythms now you've probably noticed that um, on flat.io flat.io sorry there is a teardrop shape right here that's your cursor for the for your staff paper all right you could move that cursor the teardrop by pressing the left and the right arrow keys on your computer keypad or computer keyboard okay you can also move the cursor by simply selecting parts of the measure like this so i'm going to select beat three here beat four and you'll notice that that's what moves if the cur uh, wherever the cursor is wherever that cursor or the teardrop is is what gets affected so when i want to put a note in okay this is what gets affected this beat okay so since i want to put a note on beat one i move the cursor the teardrop to beat one and this is where I click my enter my note in or accidental or um, or note value or if I want to put a dotted note that's the that's the section of the measure that's going to be affected that's wherever the cursor the cursor or the teardrop is okay um, what else other things oh so um, 
and this is before we get into pitches and rhythms you'll notice that i have what's called um this little um list over here this is called the workflow list okay and this is how we're going to complete um, putting this sample song that i wrote here all together um workflow is very important it's an organization system to working on your sheet music okay because if you don't have an organization system you're going to forget what to put in to your music okay so we want to take it one concept at a time all right and um, be organized if i try to do it one note at a time one measure one detail at a time it's going to take forever to complete one measure so you may as well complete one concept at a time so the first thing we're going to do is pitches and rhythm okay so let's get started first measure is a c whole note okay so i'm going to click whole note up here i'm in the note section the note tools and i'm going to click whole note and then I'm going to click the C on the st in the staff. Okay. You can also, I'm going to undo that really quick. You can also pr put a C in the staff by typing the letter C on your computer keyboard. So let me select whole note again and press the letter C on my computer keyboard. Okay. The problem is with doing it with pressing the computer keyboard letters in is that it you don't know what octave you're going to get okay so let's say that happens move the teardrop over the underneath the note that you're going to change and i'm going to use my uh, keypad arrow keypad on my computer keyboard to adjust a note so i'm just going to press down and there you go there's my low c okay next measure we need to have a whole note d Let's see what happens if I press D on my computer keyboard. All right, there's low D. Okay, you can also you can also insert the note by clicking the note into the staff. So notice how my whole note D is showing up under my mouse cursor. If I just click here, there's D. Okay, if I want to change that note, I can press up and down on my keyboard computer keyboard arrow keys so I was going up and down okay I like just I just like selecting the note value and then type and pushing it into the staff like press it, clicking it into the staff I'm okay with that but if you have the patience to type the letters in um, using your keyboard and you want to adjust the octave if it gets out of place that's cool too so you have two options all right, let's keep going. Next is E flat and F half notes. So click my half note and hit E flat. Click my half note and then F. Okay. Next measure measure is a G quarter note. Next note is a G or sorry, an A natural quarter note. So I'm going to click the A natural here. But you'll notice that there's no natural sign because of the key signature. It's automatically A flat. Okay, so how do we change this A flat to A natural? Real simple. Move my cursor over. Make sure the teardrop is over the underneath the A. Go to my note tools and click natural. And there you go. That A flat just became A natural. Without that flat sign there, it's A flat because of the key signature. Okay. Next note is an eighth note B natural. So I'm going to click. First of all, I'm going to make sure that my cursor is over B three click eighth note and um, click in b flat it's actually b natural so again i'm going to move my cursor over make sure my teardrop is over or underneath the b make sure i'm in my note tools click natural all right next is c eighth note c And then the last note's a quarter note C. Okay, now hang on here. That changed because my teardrop was an overbeat four. Okay, so we made a mistake here. I made a mistake. So I'm gonna I'm gonna undo. There's an undo button up here. If you don't have this um, circle with the arrow um, going counterclockwise, okay. There's two ways to undo. You can hit Apple Z or Command Z for a Mac or Control Z for Chromebooks and PCs. All right, so I'm going to undo. Okay, and there's my C again. 
You can also go up here next to the notes. You should have a documents tool section. Click on documents and then you'll see the counterclockwise undo icon. All right. Now, I want a, I want to put a C on beat 4. So I'm going to put my cursor right here over beat 4. Click quarter note and put my C. Click it in. All right. So let's keep going. Next is measure 5. We have Four sixteenth notes, C, B flat, A flat, and G. C, B flat, A flat, G. And all I did was I clicked the notes into the staff. Next. Oh, and by the way, this automatically came out as B flat and A flat because of the key signature. All right. Next is F and E flat eighth notes. F, E flat, then D and C quarter notes. That's measure five. Next is measure six. Notice here that we have an eighth note triplet. Okay, that's the three eighth notes beamed together with a, with a three on top. So first thing I'm gonna do is gonna hit eighth note up here. Make sure that my first beat is selected with the cursor, with the teardrop. I'm gonna hit C. Reselect the C again under my note tools under my note tools, click on the triplet or the tuplet tool, and then click the three over here. And there you go. There's your eighth note triplets set up for you in the in the in this measure. All right. So C. I want to put a D here, so I'm going to highlight this eighth rest and put a D in that place, and then E flat. So there's your eighth note triplet. Next, I want a quarter note. Hit quarter note up here and put the F. In this uh, next beat over here, we want to put a G, eighth note. And then we need to have two sixteenth notes here in this section. So I'm going to do sixteenths, A natural, and B natural. Now it's not coming out natural because um, of the key signature. So I'm going to highlight this A flat, go to my note section, and click natural. Highlight the B flat with the teardrop tool again. Highlight the B flat in my note tools. Click the natural sign. And there's your B natural. All right. And the last note of this measure six is a C. So I'll move my cursor over to this beat right here. Quarter note and C. Okay. Now you'll notice that in my music, um, it's only two measures long. Okay, and in the and in flat.io, they want you to make the music. Um, they they want by default to make the second line three lines long. So I'm going to select the C over here. I'm going to select the C over here. The teardrop is over beat four of measure six. Okay, and then I'm going to go to measure tool, and I'm going to hit this system break right here. Okay, actually, that's wrong. So if you make a mistake like that, just undo Command Z or Apple Z or Control Z. All right, back to where we had it. I actually want this measure right here, measure seven, to be in the next line. So first highlight this note over here. And there we go. Now measure seven is the next line. Pretty cool, right? So next is measure seven. We got to put in our two sixteenths and eighth note. So I go to my note tools again, two sixteenth notes. So click sixteenth and then put the C and the B flat. Next note's an A flat. Okay, so two sixteenths and an eighth. And again, two sixteenths and an eighth right here. G, F, and E flat. G, F, eighth note E flat, click eighth note, and click in the E flat. All right, so I like, so like I said, I like using the click in method. We click the notes in with our mouse into the staff. Next is D quarter note. And then next is B natural quarter note. Okay, now that came out as B flat because of the key signature. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the cursor, the teardrop over, go to my note tools and hit natural. 
and there's B natural. Okay. The next measure is three, four times. So I'm going to move my teardrop over to the next measure. Come on. Okay, move my teardrop over to the next measure. I'm going to go to the measure tool up here. Go to time signature. Make that three, four time. Okay. So now this measure, measure eight, which is over here, measure eight is three, four time. Okay, so that's how you make a time signature change in flap.io. So next, we need to put in C, D, and E flat with eighth rests in between. So we're going to go to our notes. Okay, go to eighth note, put in a C. This one, eighth rest is already there. So what we need to do is move the teardrop over to the next count hit eighth note put the d in there this this has to be an eighth rest move over move the teardrop over one to the right hit eighth note and click in e flat and there you go there is measure eight okay with an eighth rest in between okay so be very careful with this measure you might want to watch that a couple of times all right so we've run out of music uh we've we've run out of notes so what do we do next we go to measure, we go to our measure tools, and then we want to insert a measure after our teardrop here. Okay, and then we want this measure right here, we want measure um, nine to go to the next line or system in music. So we make sure this measure is selected with the teardrop, and then we hit system break. And by the way, a system is each of these lines. So system number one up here, system number two is measure five and six, system number three is seven and eight, and system number four is measure nine. Okay, so every line in music is called a system. And that's what that's why it's called that in flat.io. So measure nine. Now we're gonna get into um, now we're gonna get into dotted eighth notes and sixteenths and dotted quarter notes. So how do we do that? Measure nine. Okay, first we have to put in a dotted eighth note. So go to your note section, click on eighth note. That's gonna be an F. Click the F into the staff. If we wanna make this F a dotted eighth note, okay, move the cursor onto the F, go to your note tools and click the dot options. All right, and you have a single dot right here. There's double dots. We're not going to do double dots. Just click on one dot. And there's your dotted eighth note. Move the cursor over because we need to put a sixteenth note in. Okay? So click sixteenth note, and this is going to be a G. And it automatically beams the dotted eighth note to the sixteenth. Okay? Next is a dotted eighth note A natural. Okay? Lots of steps involved here. Click the eighth note up here under your note tools. Click the eighth note and put the A over here. Select the A again with the teardrop. The teardrop is underneath the note and we need to make that a dotted note. Okay. Now this is coming out as A flat because of the key signature. We need to change that to A natural. So make sure the teardrop is underneath the A flat. Go to your note tools and hit natural. And now it's A natural. Move my cursor over to this section right here. We have to put B natural. So I got to make sure in my note tools, 16th note, B flat, or B natural. Now it's coming out as B flat because of the key signature. Teardrop underneath the B flat, note tools, hit natural, and there's your A natural and B natural. Dotted eighth, 16th. Next, we need to put a quarter note over here. So I move my cursor, my teardrop over here to put a quarter note. Select quarter note, and there's my C. Okay. So that was dotted eighth, sixteenth notes. Next we have dotted quarter note followed by eighth note. Hit quarter note, D. Okay, we need to make this a dotted note, D. So that was selected first. The D was selected with the teardrop, 
I go to my dot options here under notes, go to my dot options and click single dot. Okay. Next, we need to put an eighth note. That's an eighth note C. And the last note is B flat for this measure. Click quarter note, B flat. Okay. Next is A flat. Again, it's by default A flat because of the key signature. All right. This A flat needs to be a dotted quarter note. So move the teardrop, move the teardrop underneath the A flat and make it natural. And then because the teardrop is already here, let's put the dot on it because it's going to need a dot. Okay, so now it's dotted quarter note A, natural. Move the cursor over under this eighth rest because we're going to put a G eighth note there. Click the G in. Pretty cool. The last count, which is a quarter note, is an F. Okay. We want to put this next measure, we want to put measure 12 in the next line. So we got the teardrop under the first count. Go to our measure tools and system break. And now measure 12 is in the next line. Go back to my notes. We have a half note, E flat, followed by a D quarter note. And the last note's a C. Make sure in the notes tool, quarter note, and punch in the C. And then you're done with notes and rhythms. So with flat.io, okay, putting in notes and rhythms, it's kind of simultaneous. Okay, what you got to be careful about is the teardrop uh, cursor. If that teardrop cursor is not in the right spot that you want to change, um, you're going to mess up. So whatever, wherever that teardrop is, is what gets changed. So if the teardrop is here on beat two of measure 13, and I click a note in, or I make an accidental change, or a triplet, or something, that's what gets changed, because that's where the cursor is, that's where the teardrop is. Okay, that's your the teardrop is your way of selecting what you want to affect. Okay, so you got to be really careful with that. It's going to take a little bit of practice. Okay, so we are done with pitches and rhythm. The next thing we're going to do is throw in repeats. Okay, we have a repeat sign here and a repeat sign here. So we need to copy that. So measure five, we need to put a repeat sign. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to highlight the first note of measure five. I'm going to go to my measure tools. And I'm going to click on left repeat. And the repeat sign, for some reason, goes on the end of the staff. And it should. It should go right before the C. Okay, but nevertheless, there is a repeat sign. Okay. And then there's a repeat sign over here. That's at the end of measure six. We need to put one there. So I'm going to highlight the end, the last note of measure six. And I'm going to click on right repeat. And there you go. Okay. So that takes care of repeats. The next thing is dynamic symbols. So we're in the dynamic section, dynamic symbols. We have a forte in the first measure. So I select the first note, make sure the teardrop is on the first note, because again, like I said, the tear, wherever the teardrop is, is what gets affected, okay? So put the teardrop by the first note in the first measure, go to the dynamics tool and click forte. Okay. The next dynamic change is in measure five. Okay, it's going to be a piano. All right, so click on the first note of measure five and click on piano. All right, again, you have to be in your dynamic tools and then piano, click it in. And because my cursor was here, that's where the piano, piano marking went. If my, if my cursor was over here and I click piano, Okay, that's where the piano goes. And notice that I'm putting piano underneath everything. Now we don't want that, so I'm just going to do Command or Apple Z or Control Z to undo all of those actions. Okay, back to normal. But the cursor, the teardrop is right here on the C, and that's where piano is. Next, we need to put a mezzo piano on the first note of the 3-4 time. So click this, first note of the 3-4 time and mezzo piano. 
Okay. And that's all of our um, dynamic symbols. Next, crescendos and diminuendos. You're going to get to those tools by going to the dynamic tools and going here to crescendo. Okay. Now, where do we want the crescendo to start? We need the crescendo to start in the beginning of measure seven, right here, beginning of measure seven. So click the first note of measure seven. There's my teardrop tool. And I'm going to put a diminuendo or decrescendo. And there you go. It automatically puts one in there for you. Now, um, you'll notice on the diminuendo or decrescendo, there are these little circles here. Um, those are your handles to adjust the width or the length of the diminuendo. So you can click on the circle, drag around, and you can adjust the length of the crescendo. Okay, because this is going to take the whole measure, I want it going all the way to the bar line. Pretty cool, right? Next, we want to put in a crescendo. Okay, let's put a crescendo starting right here on um, the D of the 3-4 bar. And type in crescendo. Make sure you're on dynamics and click on crescendo. The crescendo is going to start wherever your teardrop is first. Okay. Now, we don't we want this crescendo to go through the whole measure. All right. So I'm going to select the crescendo so that the handles, those little circles show up. I'm going to drag the crescendo all the way up to that dynamic marking. The nice thing about flat.io is that it avoids collisions. Okay? So if if I collided into the mezzo piano, the the crescendo doesn't go into that mezzo piano. It doesn't go like this. That's a collision. We don't have that. That's a nice thing about flat.io. Okay. We can also adjust it from the right. So that's how you insert a diminuendo and a crescendo. Afterwards, we need to put in articulations. Articulations are going to be your fermatas, breath marks, staccatos, and accents. Okay, so we're going to throw those in there. Again, you need that teardrop over the note you want to affect. So let's put the teardrop on measure one. Okay, the first note of measure one, and you're going to put a fermata. Okay, if that teardrop is not there and you click fermata, wherever that teardrop is, is where the fermata is going to go. In measure two, we have a breath mark. So I'm going to put my teardrop underneath the note of measure two. And I'm going to make sure that I'm in my articulation tools and click breath mark. Cool, right? After that, we have, st we have staccatos here in measure seven. We have six staccatos in a row. All right. So I'm going to move my teardrop on the first note of measure seven and go staccato. So what I'm doing is I'm just selecting each note by pressing the right arrow key on my computer keyboard and entering the staccato. Now there is a shortcut. You can hit the right arrow key on your keyboard and then press one, the number one that's on top of the Q on your keyboard, and it puts the staccato in. Okay. I'm going to do that again. Press right on the keyboard highlight that F with the teardrop and press one. You can only press one if you're in the articulation tools. If you're in some other tool set, okay, and you um, press the number one, you're gonna get maybe a whole note instead. That's not gonna work. So make sure you're in articulations, all right? So you can use that shortcut key for one to put in your staccato, all right? Next is D. This D and the B natural here need to be accented. Okay, so highlight the D with the teardrop tool, and there's an accent right here. Highlight the B natural with the teardrop tool, put an accent. Okay, and you'll notice that the diminuendo or the decrescendo moved out of the way of the accent. So those are your articulations. Okay, we have other articulations here. All right, and the last one we're going to put in is slurs. Slurs. Okay, now slurs, this is not the easiest thing to do on flat.io, unfortunately. 
So I hope someone from flat.io is watching this and seeing how much of a pain in the butt it is to put slurs. So we have a slur here in measure three, that half note E flat to the F. Okay, so I wanna put a slur here. I'm gonna move my teardrop underneath the E flat. And by default, when you slur something on flat.io, by default, the slur, it slurs the next note automatically. You can't slur an entire measure, okay? So let me select the E flat here with the teardrop tool and hit slur and it slurs it automatically. So now E flat is slurred to the F. There are handles right here. You can click on those handles to, um, to adjust the length of the uh, slur, okay? We have a slur over here, G, slur this entire measure right here, uh, G to the C. So I'm gonna move my cursor to the first note. I'm gonna hit slur and I wanna slur this entire measure. So I grab the circle at the end of the slur and I drag it all the way to the C over here. Okay, and that's how that gets fixed. Now, um, that was actually surprisingly very, very easy. Uh, last night I was rehearsing this and I could not get this, I could not get the slur to drag all the way to the entire measure. Um, and that's the pain in the butt thing I was talking about. I was trying so hard last time to move this um, slur over, but it actually worked. So again, you select it and you just drag these circles left or right to adjust the length of the slur and how many notes you want to slur. Another limitation that I'm noticing is that the slur in music, slurs need to be put on top. Okay. Um, and so I don't know how to move that to the top. OK, um, but I don't want to add more time than I need to. But that's how you throw in slurs. OK, so the slur markings are the same as crescendos. Uh, a crescendo has these little circles or handles. The slur also has these circles or handles. You can move that to adjust the length of your slur. Um, so that's that. And you're basically done with um, with all of this. Um, Again, um, now uh, this is ideal for clarinet. Um, now let's say you you play the flute, you're following along, you play the flute, and you're like, you know what, this isn't, um, this is too low for me. Or you play the alto sax, and you're like, man, I don't want to play a low B or a low C. This is too low. What you can do is you can transpose. Okay. So what you need to do is you need to highlight all of the music or highlight the music you want. So in this case, we're going to highlight all of the music. I'm just going to click up here, pull down and drag so everything gets everything gets highlighted. And then I'm going to go to, is it under measure? Or notes? Yes, I'm going to go to my notes. Okay. And then you're going to look for transpose. Okay. So I think it's under display more. It might show up. Okay, so transpose is this button right here, this icon right here. It's got a flat sign, a note head, and a double arrow pointing up and down. So again, highlight the music. Okay, let me show you how to do that again. Highlight the music, click and drag so everything gets highlighted. Go to the note select, note tools. Mine was under display more, and then click transpose. A dialog box shows up. Interval, we don't want to change the interval. The quality, we don't want to change anything here. Um, it's going to be a perfect octave, and we want to transpose it up one octave and hit Apply Transposition. So let's say you were a flute player or an alto sax player, and you were following along with me making this clarinet one, and the notes are too low, and you want to make them up an octave higher. That's how you transpose. Now, if that's not what you want, I just have to hit Command or Apple Z on my computer keyboard or Control Z to undo all of that. And we're back to the way I wrote it. Okay. Um, I love music notation software. I actually learned a lot of rhythms using music notation software. Uh, when there was something that was complicated in my sheet music in band class or jazz band, I put my notes into the sheet into the notation software 
And what I did was I played my music and I heard what it sounded like. I heard what my music sounded like. So let's see if this gets played through. I'm gonna play it really quick. Okay, now I was trying to play it. Now the reason why it didn't play from the beginning is because my teardrop wasn't in the beginning. Okay, so put my teardrop in the beginning, hit play. So a couple of it's it's not perfect, but there was a couple of limitations. Um, for example, we had a C whole note fermata. It really didn't hold that C for um, four. Um, it didn't really hold that C. It held it for four count or sorry eight counts, and then it bled into this D. So the playback is not perfect. Um, other things were dynamics. The dynamics weren't as obvious. We didn't hear that that well. Um, and articulation, eh, you only get one kind of articulation. Um, another cool thing is the um, is because it's set for clarinet, I could play my clarinet along with my computer. I just have to hit play. Okay, and because that's a C, because I put C in there, if I play C on my clarinet, that C will also match my clarinet as well. That's concert B flat. Um, old, old, old music notation software. Um, if you put a C in your music notation software, it would actually come out as a concert C and you couldn't play along with it. It was not good. So this is the nice thing about flat.io is you could put the music in and you could play it. Let's say this was some actual sheet music and you really needed to practice it. So quarter note equals 80 was too fast. You can actually slow this down. All right. And adjust it to a speed that you know you could play it at. Okay, so you could throw your scales in there. You could put your um, sheet music in there and practice it at different speeds. Okay, so now it just changed. What if you had like a march and a half note? You could change it to half note equals 120. I'll just type it in. All right, so now you've made something very fast. Okay, most of your music is quarter note equals. Okay, all right, so this is a great way this is a great practice tool I, I learned a lot of rhythms and music just putting notes and experimenting with rhythms into no, music notation software the last thing we got to do is now that you're done is you need to save your work as a PDF and then submit it to me so how are you going to do that you're going to go to your document tools okay so next to notes you should have a document section if your browser is wide enough um, the document tools show up over here you're gonna go you can do this you can go to print and hit start printing and a print dialog box shows up and you can print out a um, you can print it through your printer or because I'm using a Mac I can save it as a PDF I don't know what happens if you save to Google Drive but try it out experiment with it and make sure you share it to my email address uh, using my district email and um but this is this is one of the ways to save it okay if you want to fit, print out a physical copy okay make sure it's directed to your printer destination to your printer if you want to save it as a pdf okay you could do that too or save it to google drive we're gonna hit cancel here um another way to save your music is to go to printable pdf so there was a cloud with a down arrow here click that cloud with a down arrow and click on um, printable PDF. You have some options here, uh, merge rests and measures, automatic multi-measure rest, high time signature, don't worry about that. Just hit export and you'll see right here at the very bottom of my browser that it's being saved 
um, as a PDF. Okay, I think if I click that, that's what the PDF looks like. Okay, and this is what you're going to submit to me. Okay, that saved PDF, you're going to email that to me and I'm going to grade it. All right, so that is how you save and print all your stuff. Okay, um, again, you're you're always welcome to watch this video as many times as possible. I've put in like a, an index or a table of contents with the timestamp to fast forward you to sections that you need to, um, that you're gonna wanna watch in case you have questions. All right, so where do you go from here after you've done this work? Well, you're gonna get some sheet music that you like um, or maybe something complicated or there's a rhythm that you wanna figure out and you're gonna put that in flat.io and then you're going to um, hit the play button and listen to how that rhythm sounds. When you do that, it's very, very important that your music matches the music, the, the, the notes that you input into flat. Sorry, the notes that you put into flat.io match the sheet music. Okay, the moment it doesn't match, the moment flat.io doesn't play what's re actually required. So you have to make sure that everything matches. If there's slurs, you got to put the slurs in, staccatos and all that, rhythms, you got to be exact. Another pitfall um, that students run into when they do music notation software is they don't read the music carefully. For example, like key signatures, okay, and accidentals, we take that kind of stuff for granted. So you got to make sure you're always, you always have an eye out for the key signature and accidentals and how notes are affected. So make sure it actually, it all matches, okay? So there's that. Good luck, happy practicing. I hope you um, find you know this, this notation software useful. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave me a, an email or a Schoology message. And uh, if anybody else is watching this video out in the YouTube world and you have a question, leave a question in the comments below. All right, good luck.